Hey everybody, it's Tessa here in the Summer Scrap Challenge, coming to you live. Give you a chance to find me. I set up my camera first, so you're not gonna see my face because I wanted to make sure that um, you could actually see the workspace. So I'm actually live in my kitchen. I has a little bit better daylight than my scrapbook room is. And while I like to be outside, all my papers would have blown away. So, so I'm on my old mount. This is the, I think it's the Archon. So it's not as flexible as the big overhead one I use when I do the zooms. So that's why you're not going to see me. So uh, for those of you um, that are watching this later, as a reminder, Uh, all of this, well, I should say, all of this is recorded. It'll be in the feed, but those of you watching it already figured that out, so that's kind of redundant. So uh, how's everyone enjoying the challenge right now? You guys have done amazing work. I'm really impressed with all of your postings. Oh, there I am. I'm going to make sure I got my laptop up here so I can see my live feed at the same time because I'm not going to be able to see your comments very well, so... And I'll get my, just got to mute myself. Hold on. I turned on the volume. Okay. Sorry. I think you saw me. Forget about these things on my laptop. Okay. We're going to talk about borders today. So, I assume most of you probably have the border maker, the border punches. And when I did my throwback today, I was looking through some of the old project recipes and I found this one, Christmas Past, which is from 2016. And when I saw this, I thought, oh, this is a good one to share with everyone just as permission to be basic. I can't tell you how many layouts I have that kind of follow this basic guide of border, pictures, journaling. Um, but if you want to take this a step up, do it a little bit fancier, we're going to talk about some of the different things you can do just with the border and then you can put it on your page and call the page done with some simplicity. I, I know we have some fun challenges, there are fun techniques out there, but sometimes you just want to get some pages done and even with some of our simpler ideas, you might want permission to just be basic. And this is a pretty basic one that um, I gave you today. Uh, and then the, the examples I shared yesterday, Room with a View was a post that I did on the Creative Life page. And I showed how I alternated the flip-flops and the sunshine. So we're gonna talk about this technique a little bit. This kind of follows the same basic premise as that project recipe is just uh, offsetting the photos with the mats a little bit, going around the corners with the clouds. And then the pages that you saw me pull up, that I put up today, they were not taped down, but I went through, this is picture of this. And I had cut some of the map pieces, some background pieces. I just wanted to give a couple simple notes. So on this type of layout, the one that I shared today, because there's so much mat space, you can get away with using sometimes a busier print if you want, or the other one had more of a tone on tone print also. So for this project recipe, it just created a border. It had four by six mats. And then it, this was four and a half by two and three fourths. I think it's in the cutting guide. And then also cut down some uh, five and a half inch mats too. So you can kind of move those around uh, to fit your pictures as desired. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about how to make this kind of border when you're alternating cartridges within the border maker system. So I already have my base here. This is the inch and a half base. Inch and a half is pretty basic when it comes to borders. Have my cardstock. I punch this with cardstock. It, it's a little easier, I think, to show technique with a little bit stif stiffer paper. And then let's review real quick the border maker system for those of you 
that might have it, you're newer to it, what are some basics with the border maker system? It comes with the long piece, the cartridge holder. There's a guide on the bottom that you can flip out and that's how you know where to put your paper in. Flip that back. And then there's six notches here along your long piece. And there's a little notch here on the top of your cartridge holder. And so what this talent is reminding you is that you have six spots that you're going to punch. And so when we're talking today about switching out cartridges, mentally you have six options for punching. So what are the types of cartridges? If you've been following Megan and I for very long, you know that we define them in three ways. There's the knockout punch which was uh, similar to these. It, it's knocking out a pattern inside of it, but leaving you two straight edges. We call that a knockout. Then there is an edger punch, like grass was an edger. It's giving you a design along one edge, but it's going to stay on the paper. So you have to cut that to have your border free and clear. And then there are chain style, like the Jumbo Jet, where you're going to get a completely loose border when you're done punching. So I'm gonna to refer to these today as knockout, edger, and chain style. This border works best with the knockout because you're maintaining those two consistent edges. So we're gonna start with that premise. I'm gonna start with the star. And you don't have to start on the end. We teach everyone, choose an end and start. You actually don't have to. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna punch my stars here in the middle, so I have two spots. It's these two notches right here are gonna be stars. So I can line that up here and punch my stars out. And then if I wanna switch cartridges, I use the chevron. Sometimes the cartridges are directional. You can see my, she my chevrons are going one way. And on my border, I actually am gonna flip my paper so they're both pointing to the stars in the middle. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start at the bottom because it's going to punch my chevron towards my star. To get the effect where the chevrons are coming down pointing to the stars, I actually have to flip my paper because I cannot change the way the cartridge punches in the guide. I'm gonna come down here and punch. But these knockouts are the most forgiving if that you're new to trying this technique. So here, like I said, the knockouts are gonna stay on the same edge. You have to trim it to the width that you want. And for a border like this, that is a one inch trim. Uh, well, it was probably a little bit more than one inch. That was probably an inch and a quarter because I just messed it up. So, okay, well, just forgive me. This is what happens when you do it live. Yeah, it's a little over an inch. Okay, well, let's pretend like I kept my edge intact. And if you'll notice in the room with the view, I alternated the paper behind the knockout technique. So if you wanted to do that, you can cut thin strips of paper and adhere them behind the shapes that you cut out. And I have a black. So this is about three quarter inch. And then you would, you would want it to be about four inches long to fit behind your border. So whichever side you're calling the back of your border, you would adhere this with some repositional tape. And then when you flip it over, it's going to give you those colors on the inside. You could also get the effect, you know, by putting your stars back in if you punch them with a different color. I had made a different border earlier. You know, you can take the, the negatives and put them back in. However, when you have things like chevron, that's hard to do. So you'd probably get an easier effect if you just put paper behind there, if you want it to be different than your background paper here. And I, I will go back and look at your questions. It's kind of hard for me to see on my phone, but let me get through what I wanted to show you and then I can go back and uh, make any other recommendations. So that's how you do the knockout just with uh, those two. So what are some other knockout options? 
I'm going to show you the rest of my demonstration using white paper. This is what I always play with. They are the, what comes in the front of the paper packs. It's a very nice stiff paper. So it works well with all the cartridges. I can throw it away. I don't feel bad about using up any of my cardstock. So if you want to play around with your punches, I encourage you just to get some of this to play with. So let's look at a couple of different options. When we get into using edgers and chains, the edging ones are a little bit easier. I would say those are second and the chains are a little bit more, um, you have to pay a little bit more attention. So I wouldn't recommend starting with those. But this example I want to use showing the you and me. So this is a knockout punch and we're gonna play with the, the double heart, which was a chain style. But if you punch your knockouts in the middle, And then you can do a chain style on the ends. You just have to do a little bit of trimming when you're done. So because this is on the edge, you have to get your trimmer. You do have to be careful when you're trimming here because I wanna make sure I don't actually trim my hearts. I just need to get this you and me trimmed. I'm gonna line this up on my cutting line and I'm not gonna drop my cutting blade until I'm over this one you make sure that you're deep enough to get all of it and then with every chain if you aren't punching it completely as a chain you're gonna have this top piece that usually would have punched clean so you will always have to trim a chain punch if you use it in connection with anything else So pretty cute, huh? You could use pink, red. If you wanted, you could also, um, where's my little black piece? Probably wouldn't use black, but the same thing, you can put a color behind your knockout and give it a different effect also with that. Let's look at, I wanted to, another example would be of a knockout. How many of you guys have the music notes? Oh, and you have to make sure you give yourself a clean edge to start if you are using a knockout punch because you are not gonna lose that edge. You're gonna be keeping the top of it. I literally have every cartridge. And so when I was going through her to pick some out, I was trying to find ones that aren't too old or too hard to find because I didn't want to tease you with some of them that are, are rare. So here's the music notes. I'm going to punch two of those in the beginning. I mean, in the middle. And then I thought infinity might pair well as a chain on each side of that. So I can kind of awkward with me trying to stay on the camera. I kind of messed that one up yet again. This is not how I usually work. I don't usually do it at my kitchen table and try to punch looking through my camera. But I know you guys can get the gist of what I'm trying to do. And this is why we use practice paper. So if I punch that infinity clean the first time, you can see that the chains will work really well off something coming off the middle, and this could even be an edger if you found one that you liked. So what would that look like? Let's pick out an edger to play with. Um, grass. Grass is a pretty popular one. There was um, one from Create Memories, one from Our Memories for Life. It punches along the top, and I'm thinking, what would go well with grass? What about the rainbow? So the rainbow is also an edger. So when you're looking for cartridges that would be good to use for this technique, you have to look on the back of it and see if you have a complete design, because you're going to get this full effect. I also pulled out so here's a good example of 
A cartridge that's very similar, yeah, are going to work very differently. This is uh, Scallop Wave, and when the bridge came out, a lot of us were like, that's very similar. I'm not sure I need both. Uh, if you look on the back, the Scallop Wave, you're going to get that complete cut, right? You're getting two complete waves. So that this would work really well in conjunction with other cartridges. However, with the bridges, you're going to get the middle of that bridge. And so you're going to have that loose piece there that might not connect very well uh, with something next to it. So same, very similar design, but the way that they did the design of the cartridge is going to affect the way that it works within this. The rainbow is a complete design, so it should work pretty well. It should play nicely, as Megan would say. Megan's punches play together. It's gonna play well with, with about anything else I put next to it. So let's see, on this top edge, I could put some grass, if that went. And uh, let's try something different here. We could try the scallop wave down here. You can see because of the way the wave comes up, where it's meeting the rainbow, you know, that might look a little awkward, depending on what you use cartridges. If you have just a slight awkwardness in the way where it comes together, you could pull out even some embellishments, the little jewels, or if you have any of the old CM punches, some of these are small enough, you could create uh, a cohesive look of pulling them together. Now let's flip on the other side of here and play with, let's look at the scallop with the bridge and see how the bridge would look like what I just talked about. So I'm gonna put a scallop here in the middle. And then if I pull my bridge out next to it, that it, did, it actually worked out pretty well with that one because the scallop left me an edge for that bridge to connect to. Now that might not connect as well with um, like here's a double chevron. This is a knockout. You think it would actually be pretty easy to use but because it's going to cut off in the middle of each chevron. It's kind of going to give you that hanging edge also. So you can see that those don't really mesh very well together. However, on the other side, the scallop wave, scallop wave actually ends up being a pretty good one because it leaves that edge. It can pair up against something else with that solid edge. So I went through and I was trying to look, okay, which ones have good edges, which clean edges and which ones do not. So on the, on the, uh, the side of, I think they would work pretty well. I have gears, I have the simple leaf, the cable chain. We're gonna talk about the chains next. These are all gonna be chains and spiky evergreen. So the difference with the chains is that they, have, they truly have to be able to connect up well with what's chained next to them or it's going to fail. And crystal chain is really pretty, but it's a good example of one that's probably gonna fail if you pair it up against another chain because of how it would have to connect. I'm gonna give myself a clean edge here and play with the chains for a little bit. This is spiky evergreen. I think it ended up being a nice chain. The, the chain comes straight down the center. So if it's gonna connect with something down the center, like cable chain, it actually pairs up pretty well. However, I told you that it failed with crystal chain. It cut it in half. Cause you can see that crystal chain is not coming through that center so it's crystal chain would have to pair up against something knockout that's given, or the scallop wave, something that's gonna give it that hard, clean edge to chain to. And on the other side of it, if I did the simple leaf, same thing, the simple leaf coming off the middle, there's nowhere for it to connect. So you can kind of play around and as you get used to the concept, you can see which ones probably will work well together and which ones will not. So let's look at tweed. So we have cable chain here. If I wanted to connect in with the tweed, it works, but it's a little bit awkward because the tweed 
is not giving you the full design. This side looks okay, but because of this gap right here, depending on what I put on the other side of it, like if I finish out with gears, you can see I get this incomplete design over here because it's not gonna line up very well with what's coming off on the other side. So the chain ones can be done. They're not my favorites when it comes to using more than one in a row. I have a few borders to show you that I actually pulled out. I went through my old, um, the displays I have when I take to events. Uh, the first one is Simple Leaf. Is a simple leaf. I didn't pull it off of the board. It's already wearing itself out a little bit. You can see it's torn here. But with sometimes with the chains, you don't need to punch the whole chain. You can just punch once within the chain and give it the silhouette. I punched two simple leaves. So I put a little sticker in the middle and I left the rest of it open and matted it on there. You can skip spots too. You don't have to punch in every hole. On this one, this was the butterflies. You can see I punched the four middle ones and I left the two open on the end. So it just gives it a different effect, uh, kind of a more of a centered design. Here's uh, the arrow and the sunshine. The arrow is another really good one for changing the direction like I showed you when it first started. If you flip your paper, you can get your arrows pointing opposite directions. Here's one that is the star. So I only punched three of them, and then I cut this down as a banner flag and posted it onto that, onto that paper. This is sorbet. So you don't have to do a full 12 inches either. And same thing, this was garland, which is a knockout punch. I punched three of them. I think this actually was not my idea. I think this might have come off a blog post or something some other advisor did it. So I don't want to take complete credit for some of these borders. I did not think of all of these on my own. Here's an old one, the film strip. And then I used the star, but then I punched the stars out of something else and put them on top. Or I could have come in behind and just put the little strips of yellow behind there, depending on which way you want to go on that design. This one is not punching to, but it's layering. This was the midnight star, the moon and stars. You can see with the knockout there on the midnight star, I put the yellow behind there. So that came through the same color as the moon and stars. I did this similarly with the, this was um, star banner chain. And then this one was a chain one you recognize these two that actually worked out pretty well and I would not have thought so but this was the dancing daisies and you can see that that's a partial design right but because it was pretty straight up and down it worked pretty well connecting to the lace flower chain adding some little jewels in there So I think that's kind of gives you a good idea of using the actual border maker. Um, let's talk about the actual big border punches. So give me a second to get all these cartridges out of the way. Pull up here to look on my laptop and see if I can see your comments. There we go. Catch up a little bit. And Megan's on here too, so she's answering questions. Yeah, I'm glad to see you guys putting your pictures on your paper. Uh, yeah, the animal tracks, um, zoo, sunshine, uh, the chevrons, a lot of those basic ones um, would go. I, you know, in full disclosure, I don't love our border maker collection right now. I think that they, they are nice in their own specific, specific they're very specific. How about that? Uh, but sometimes that means they don't play well generally with a lot of other stuff. Okay. So let's talk about the border punches. 
So same thing. If you want to look for border punches that are going to play well in chains, you have to look at what you're getting in the full design. You can see this on the front. You can also flip it over if it gives you a better visual. So this is scallop burst, a good example of one that's not going to play very well if you're connecting with anything that doesn't have a full side. Um, and I was asking Megan, so that we'll, we'll ask the group. This is a pop quiz. There is one border maker punch that actually Megan thought of it that is truly a knockout that keeps the top edge straight and knocks out. Can anyone name that one border punch that's a knockout? The rest of them are either the edgers or the chain. So put it in the comments if you can think of what that would be. Otherwise, most of them are edgers. Cityscape is an edger. Mountains is an edger. Roller coaster is an edger. And then we do have some that throw in chain style like seashells, flower child. Those are both chain ones. It's not dazzle. Dazzle's an edger. It's not a, a knockout would have to have a straight edge on top. So let's play a little bit with these. I did not pull out all of them. I pulled out some of them. So let's look at a uh, roller coaster. Let's start with that. The other thing with the border punches is you actually don't have to start on the edge. You really can just start in the middle of your paper. If you want to be fairly in the middle, you know, just kind of eyeball it a little bit. So I'm going to do this one. I'm going to start with two roller coasters side by side. It is out of my element to be punching with the camera between me and my punch. It's not train tracks, that's not a straight edge. Flip flops a border maker cartridge. We're looking for a true border punch. Tracy, you're close. Basket weave has the little notches, but that's almost, almost a knockout. For those of you still thinking it is old, it is old school punch. And that's why it was not on the top of my mind because I have not used it in a really long time. The dying, that's not, that's not a straight edge. I'd have to have straight edge top, straight edge bottom. Now no one's paying attention to me because you're all looking through your collections, which is funny. Okay, so what about, let's work with Dazzle. Dazzle is a nice one that's generic, so it's going to go with a lot of things. Um, it's a really nice one to combine because you're getting the full Dazzle in one punch. There's no loose edges. So how do you do this? You know, you could you put it in here, you're trying to figure out where to punch it. I think the easiest thing to do is actually turn it upside down. If you have a steady enough hand, you're going to use that straight edge here line it up and give it a punch like that. So then I have my little edges here. So you think it make real sense, right? I could just feed it in here, line it up, but no, you can't do this because you've punched the reverse. This is not gonna line up exactly. It's gonna line up close to it, but it's not going to be exactly the same. Um, and so for me, I would just keep doing it the same way. Or another fun thing, I don't, I might not have left myself enough space. If you have the tree line, the tree line's fun because you have four distinct trees. And so if I were doing something and I just wanted a tree, depending on how, if you measure your space out almost, one of the samples I did was actually right on. I think I got one tree on one and I got two trees on another. Um, you can just get enough in there to do that. So that's combining the roller coaster and dazzle. Now, sometimes if you don't want to do the same line, maybe you want to do something else here along the bottom and you would trim it and punch again. So let's Let's go back to Scallop Burst. So Scallop Burst was one I said, doesn't play well with other ones, but it's nice as um, kind of an accent on a lot of borders. 
Um, I'm gonna look at how wide this is. So an inch would cover my full design. So I'm going to trim this border down as if I wanted scallop burst along the bottom. Make sure I give myself about an inch left. And then I can feed this No, I wasn't close enough. I have to go back to their side to finish that. And you can see that I've been able to give myself a real thin space in between. I didn't need to leave room for the whole size of the punch. I just needed to leave room for whatever the design actually would be because it pushes up into the punch. And then I can come back down here to the other side to clean up that edge. Okay, looks like we're still guessing. It's not lace trim, it's not scallop, it's not lattice. I don't know, Megan. I think I'm gonna have to give someone a prize, whoever figures this out. I'm saying old, it's an old one. Some of you probably don't even have it and don't try to find it because you won't get it. It's rare. So there, so there we could have our Dazzle roller coaster and you can put something along the bottom. So I could even, I, I left myself about an inch and I could have actually gone even uh, thinner if I wanted that along the bottom. Okay, so those are those two. Let's play with, Oh, here's another one I did when I was playing. I can just show you. That actually is a good one. So Baroque, I found, was an interesting one. Baroque is the only one of at least of the ones. Oh, it's not Argyle, Janet, but you're getting so close. So close. Baroque was the only one I saw that dipped down below this punch line. If you look on the back of it, I had never really appreciated that before. Most of them use this bottom edge and Baroque dips below that. I don't know why they did that because it's kind of a waste of paper up here. Um, you can see when I punched all these in the line, I had tree line next to the mountains, dazzle, Baroque fell down, and then I didn't space very well, uh, but it was arch border. And then I did the arch border along the bottom. I could have left myself even a thinner space there at the bottom. So let's play with um, seashells and flower. I mean, I said flower child earlier. It's doily. They look so similar. Doily, not flower child. So if I look at these, are they going to connect? It's going to be iffy. Doily actually has this little circle here, so it's not going to be a straight edge, and it might not be enough to attach to the seashells on both sides. But how do you find things out? You just play and see so if i punch one edge of my it's not flower garden this is fun what a great trivia question i didn't even get it right megan's the one that thought of it so it did give me enough on that side you can see i was able to keep the doily and the seashells attached but let's try the other side And that one did work. So it looks like those chains were thick enough that I could combine them. Film strips a border cartridge, not a border punch. But good try. Uh, the only thing about doing it this way is you have to kind of have a steady hand and a steady eye. And I think. I jam my doily. I've never jammed my doily. This is what happens when you go live. And you're watching your laptop at the same time. Okay, we've ruined this one. I think I didn't make sure I had all my trash out first. Try that again. Or not. If you ever have problems with your punches, it usually helps to drop them, throw them, 
doily is not one that I have usually had problems with. But we're going to put it in timeout since we're live. So let's play with seashells with an edger. So what would go with seashells? That's different. Um, we could try arch border. It's kind of different. I'm not sure we're going to like this look. But you never know until you try, right? So I want to be in the middle because I want my seashells to be an edge. So if you're combining edgers and a chain, the chain generally will probably need to go on the outside. So I don't think this one actually will work because of the way the arch border sits. It's going to be real close. So that one is probably not one I can recommend because you can see that the arch border, so that's another good point. It's connecting down into the bottom of the punch and so it's not gonna play very well with things coming off to the side. What else I got down here? Let's see, what about, here we got cakes. See the dine is going to be a very bad one to play with unless you're giving something that has a straight edge. But you know what actually would be fun with the dine is if you left your middle open. Art Deco, who's the winner? Stephanie Morgan, you win. That's the only one that, I, well, I thought of none of them, that Megan could come up with that's a true knockout punch where it has a straight edge on the top and the bottom. I should have brought mine in here. I'll go grab it and show you all now that you're all curious. So, okay, dine. So say I wanted to leave um, the middle of this open for some journaling or maybe some titling. I'm gonna start with a some paper out here. Um, let's go about halfway. And then I'm gonna pull it through and punch the edge. And then I could do the same thing on the other side. And so when I trim this out, like I said, be careful you don't want to cut into your chain. I'm going to put this on my trimmer and just try to get along the top of my plates. This would be really cute to use as a title for something. You can measure it up a little bit better. Um, if you wanted to try to get maybe the full spoon over here. Um, if this were mine, I'd probably just go ahead and cut off the edge of the plate. And so this would not sit, I'd probably mat this on top of something else anyways. I was so close on this side, if I had had just a little bit more room I could have trimmed off this spoon into the edge of the knife and given myself a clean edge on there. So it gives you a little bit of design, but it's not overwhelming all of it. Let's play with the cake. So the cake's gonna be, so let's look at the back of the cake first. So the cake is tricky too, because you can see that the, the connection in the design literally is only right here. So that means I'm not going to be able to put it up against anything that's a chain, and I'm not gonna be able to put it up against any edger that comes too low, like with arch border. Arch border would be a fail because there's gonna be nothing left on the paper, unless I leave it on the edge. They could both punch on the edge of something, and I could trim out the cakes. Let me show you what I mean for that. I think. So I don't know that see it's going to sit kind of higher the way arch borders is higher. 
but it can sit next to cakes. It just, I'm gonna have to leave a bottom edge here to keep everything connected. Let me go grab the Art Deco, now that you're all curious. So the Art Deco was really early on, and it has this edge that gives you a straight edge. You see what I mean? It's just not, it's not a, it's just a knockout because it's leaving that edge up there. I won't even tell you, I didn't, I mean, it's a fun trivia, but this one's super hard to find. So I wouldn't even go look at it. This would be a good one for them to bring back because so few people probably actually have it. But some of the lattices give you the same effect. That's Art Deco. A couple of you mentioned basket weave and you were oh so close. Basket weave has those notches. And it's probably one of the messier ones, but you can see it's not giving you that straight edge. It's, it's actually punching out there. So those are a lot of examples. I'm going to check my notes and see if there's anything that I miss saying. Um, we talked about on these, you know, if you want to give yourself a, a thin edge with the border maker because it's coming up inside here, it's fine how thin it is. Uh, let me just remind... People, I didn't bring this in here. If you're doing the border maker the same way and you're giving yourself a thin, you would have to use post-it notes. Most of you are probably familiar with the post-it note technique. Um, let me punch something real quick. If I was doing an edger on top, so let me punch some bridges real quick. Bridges could make a nice accent along the bottom of something, but if you wanted to punch across the top and have it be pretty thin, you'd have to give yourself, you know what the other thought I just had too is, it would be nice to even some of these bigger border makers across the top, but say it's thin, you know, you're not even two and a half inches. If you tried to go put this in your border maker cartridge, you don't have anything left to put along your magnet, right? I mean, it's, it's gonna come out. If you get post-it notes and put post-it notes here, so the post-it notes on your edge and across the magnet, it'll hold it down for you so that when you go to punch, the post-it notes are sticking out and you can punch along the edge. Now, I don't have any post-it notes in here. You can, you can mix them. Um, we could try some. A lot of the border punches are bigger. Here, let's switch that. So if I did, let's see what happens. Seashells is bigger. The other thing with the border makers, you don't actually have to use it with the guide. You can hand hold it also if you wanted to. I put music notes in here because I knew that would give me a straight edge. On this side. You know, I can, I can give myself some music notes there and backwards. Should have punched it on the other side. Or if I wanted to connect in, let's see. Let's see if the simple leaf would connect.
So the difference here with this one is I'm gonna punch this, but it's not gonna go as deep. So it's not going to connect at the same level as the seashells because the seashells is bigger and fatter. So the chains are probably gonna be hard, but you easily could connect up with the edgers easier. Well, I shouldn't say, that's not true. We're, scratch that. It depends on what your edge is, right? Like we were already talking about, the tree line's gonna come all the way down here. So if you were using um, a border maker, like I just did with music notes, that's not gonna knock out beside it. Otherwise you have to leave a strip along the bottom. So if I wanted to play with tree line, what would be a border maker I'd want to use beside tree line? Um, I don't know. Let's play with the arrow. Now, if I, let's see what happens if I stick this in my guide. First of all, I should not have punched tree line first, right? Because it's not necessarily lined up to where my cartridge is gonna go. I can't customize it as easily. I flipped this over, you can see, because, uh, because arrow has to fit in the groove. It's, it would fit on that side, but this side, it's gonna leave me a pretty good gap. So it's going to be hard to do that with the guide, but I could stick this in here and give myself an arrow. Now, if I wanted my arrow to point towards the trees, remember I have to flip it over. I told you arrow was a good one of changing directions because it just depends on which way you stick your paper in there. But then you have these pointy edges, and some people are not going to like the look of the pointy edges. Now, if you're matting this whole thing on top of another paper, um, then you might. Picket fence and tree line. Let me see if I can find my picket fence. Let me punch the picket fence first. And see what happens. So if you're in a mood to do something, you're just not in the mood to actually think about pictures. You could just sit down with some of this cardstock and play. The other thing about the border punches versus the cartridges is the width of the design. So you're gonna have a hard time going back and forth here because if I punch the tree here I'm eating up into space because you can see that the cartridge is always going to be thinner than I think all of the border punches. Now I can stick some trees there but I would have done better had I turned it over and then I could have punched right next to my picket if I would have liked that look. Yeah, Charming Village. Um, there are definitely some good border punches that work well together. I, like I said, Dazzle works well with a lot of things. Um, what else I got down here? Songbirds is not going to play very nicely unless it's next to something with an edge, right? Because you only have this real thin chain to connect with it. Um, we have the diamond arches this one is going to be kind of the, uh, more like the bridges right that it's an incomplete design unlike the rainbow so if you have the rainbow uh, it would look better cityscape in the on the road okay let me give myself a clean edge Oh my, the mess, the paper mess now. Let me see if 
I can find my on the road. I don't see it. It's probably buried under papers in my room somewhere. So next suggestion. <laughs> Uh, the thing about cityscape, though, right, is that it's it's connecting at the bottom. So, and I think the road's going to come along the edge. So, it may do better if you punched a couple of city. And then if you trimmed this out, it would kind of be a city up on the hill, right? Um, No, that wouldn't work either. I was thinking that you would be able to do your border maker deep, but you might have problems. Um, well, it'll be something similar. I don't know. Let's try rainbow. So you can get your border maker down in there. But you're not going to be able to come up to the city. It's going to stop you. But you could do kind of a dimensional having some punches up higher on the paper than others. Now, I don't know exactly which ones would look best if, with that technique. But, yeah, I do have rolling hills. I can try that one. I just saw that. And I got the evergreen out. So the rolling hills is real low connection in the evergreen. I could probably put evergreen and the rolling hills side by side. Somebody's probably actually already done that. They have, for those of you that may not remember, they took a survey of which border maker cartridges we'd most like to see. And I think they'll call it something like Open the Vault. And hopefully they'll re-release some of the most popular high demand ones. Rolling Hills, I don't know, because I already reordered that the first time. I don't know if they would do that again. Um, footprints, I think, would be. Maybe Paw Prints would come back. So these look nice next to each other. The grass, actually, you would think it's nature, but it's going to, grass sits fairly tall. Um, where'd it go? It sits fairly tall in the design. It's going to look like your trees are in the jungle. Uh, out of proportion, I should say. Some of these are not are a little bit out of proportion, but if you're building a border like I did on Border Maker Monday and Creative Life, uh, maybe different layers of trees, that might be fun to do. Let's see, nature. Yeah, some of the, oh, there's on the road. I just overlooked it. Here we go. So on the road is connecting along the bottom, but actually it's about halfway up. So it's gonna sit higher. It sits higher than grass for sure. It might actually work out okay with now, see, then you're going to kind of get this high cut next to something with a low cut. And you have to look at the proportion with it. So, yeah, a lot of options. Let me scroll through here and look at your comments and see if... Uh, oh, someone asked, yes, about the dine and the wine. Here, I do have the wine here. 
Actually, I shouldn't say I have all of them here because I have not opened animal tracks and I don't think I have barbed wire and what's the other newest one? Rope? I don't even think I have them open yet. If you want up to date, like as soon as they come out examples, that's why I have my friend Megan. I don't know if I have the wine chain. Some of them I open for the demos, but my son takes the pictures and sometimes I think he puts them back in the box and then it gets put back away. Uh, let me grab it. Yeah, sometimes I laugh because Megan will like do some fancy pose. She'll have great pictures. I'm like, uh, my order came a week ago and it's still sitting in the box. Like I literally haven't even opened it and she has Facebook posted, shared, ready to go. She's a little bit more on top of things than me. So here's animal tracks, the barbed wire and the wine chain. So current ones, we can see how they play. So wine chain is going to be a good chain to connect because it's connecting here in the middle. Animal tracks is a knockout, so it's going to go with anything like I was saying early on. So sunshine, chevron, it's going to look well with all those knockouts that have this straight edge. Um, they did pretty well with the barbed wire because they closed out this circle. So you actually have a full edge here to connect up against something. Now the, the, the problem with combining wine chain and dine is that you will have to do it, you're gonna have the different sizes, right? This is going to be wide. So you'd probably have to start with dine and finish it. And dine is going to punch, I don't know about this, it might be the wrong direction because it punches upside down and the wine chain is going to punch right side up. So I think this is going to be a fail. Nope. Dine is, I don't know. Do we have any other ones that are like literally upside down from the way you would look at the design? I don't know why they made this one like that. But since I got them out, let's go ahead and punch the barbed wire. I'll give myself a, there's a wine chain punch. And so you can see that, that the barbed wire actually is going to be a really good one to connect in with anything thing that comes off the center, which includes cable chain. I mean, I'm not saying that themes will go together, but the cartridges are gonna go together. Where'd my leaf go? Those center ones work well. Yeah, so much punch confetti. I have a big mess here. Let's see, which other ones have, oh, here's a bad one. Uh, mirrored triangles is gonna be a bad one because it does not come down the center. That little piece does, but these pieces are gonna be dangling out here. Now, that being said, you could possibly trim them, right? You could connect down the middle and trim. Micro tip scissors are the best for doing some of these little cuts. You know, what if I wanted to come in here and just cut off that stray? The 
then actually, you know, that one, this one isn't too bad. It'll just give you two little diamonds if you want to fussy cut. That's not bad. That's pretty, it could combine in. It gives you some options. This would actually probably be a good one too to combine with, well, I was gonna say some of the bigger border punches to kind of give you that edge, but you have to remember, you gotta make sure you can connect here through the center and that's gonna be the problem with a lot of those border punches connections being down at the bottom. Oh, so, so the dine was an error. It wasn't supposed to be made like that. Yeah, a lot of these would work better as layers, not side by side. But so if you're completing your challenge, so the whole point of this was on the bingo square, using two borders or two cartridges on the same side. This is what I meant. However, if that doesn't work... I will still give you credit if you want to do something more along this style. If you want to punch something on one edge, trim it down and use a different punch along the bottom. If that works better for your design, then you could do that. Yeah, there's a lot of options and you should see the mess. Let's look at my mess now. Oop, look at all that. Oh, there's my broom. See, I got my broom ready. Oh, and then I got all my... Punch poop. And I already cleaned up the mess from my practice. And back over there, see, we got Maxie. Maxie! Can you say hi? Maxie's sitting by the back door. I had to feed him before I went live so that they would not be up here in my space because I was setting up my live. Gray Kitty was up here in it. So that gives you something to clean or something to clean something to think about a lot to clean up with a lot of options you can do with the punches um, sometimes if you're not feeling like pages sitting down and playing can be therapeutic and just give you a big mess to clean up afterwards so if you play with anything you're welcome to post it in the group it does not have to be part of a challenge um, you could still hashtag it challenge six or no throwback six hashtag throwback six if you want um, just to um, tie it in with the guide because guide six is where this handout. So I will put together a handout. Uh, realistically, it's already five o'clock here. I probably won't get it out today, but I'll put something together that kind of shows how you can do some of this um, with the punches. So there was not an official throwback six guide today because I had referred to my CLS post. This one. And because I put in the Christmas past project recipe, which is really all you needed to know. So the throwback itself is just to do something basic like this. You do not have to switch out your border. The throwback, to complete the throwback, it just has to be a layout simplicity like this. The whole border thing, that's just something fun. It, if you want to cross off a square, it's completely optional. If it hurts your head too much, stay with what you know, and we'll leave it at that. So... Thank you. I will scroll through here when I'm done. If there's any other questions, I will answer them in the feed. Otherwise, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining us. It is so sad to think that we are at the end of week six. My kids literally start school three weeks from yesterday. Next week, the twins will be at camp. Then we have one week of nothing. And then the following Wednesday, they start school. Megan and her West Coast place, they don't start till September. So um, I know some places have more weeks. But here in Indiana, we like to start school early so that we can have fall break. And that means we start like August 4th, I think. So it is so sad mentally. But I've been a slacker this summer. You can ask Megan. I'm a very bad partner. I only get done what I have to have done. But I told her my summer is coming to an end quickly, and I will be a better uh, scrapbooker. We'll see. I don't know. I'm blown away by how much you guys are doing. It's so impressive. I'm going to lay it out here right now. If I finish my 32 pages, I will be floored. I don't think I'm going to get 32 pages done. There's just too much going on. And she just reminded me, I have to post and feature Project Friday tomorrow for CLS. So that's actually what I'll be doing tonight is getting ready for that. So you will not see a handout for this tonight. 
I will try to get it up maybe tomorrow after I get the CLS post up. So thank you all for joining me. Put your questions in the feed. Have a good night.